Well, my name is Kevin Miller, and I'm one of the full-time faculty at the UCLA Jules Stein Eye Institute. And my practice is um, focused on cataract surgery and refractive surgery, uh, mostly on the cataract side of things. And uh, I've been doing astigmatism management for most of my career, for 20 years or so. And, uh, and for me, astigmatism management uh, comes in sort of a, uh, a, a, a step ladder, if you will, where, where we'll rotate the phaco incision on steep axis for smaller amounts of astigmatism from basically zero up to one diopters. And then from one to one and a half diopters, we will do paired uh, corny relaxing incisions. And then typically beyond that, we'll jump into toric lenses. And in the US, we have toric lenses that are available up to four diopters of correction in the corneal plane. And then for something higher than that, then we'll add back a corneal relaxing incision. So I can get actually up to six diopters of correction combining uh, limbo relaxing incisions, or what I prefer to say peripheral corneal relaxing incisions with a toric IOL. Now in the US, we don't have uh, toric uh, multifocals yet. Hopefully we'll have them soon, but until we do, we also use uh, corneal relaxing incisions to correct higher amounts of astigmatism. I'll correct two, two and a quarter, sometimes even two and a half diopters of corneal cylinder when, um, when I'm implanting a multifocal. And of course, once we have toric multifocals, we won't need to do that. And um, so I, for all these years, my favorite diamond knife for doing the relaxing incisions has been uh, Doug Mastel's uh, knives. Um, and, and in particular, I like uh, a special foot plate design uh, on the PhD um, device, the PhD handle. Um, I like the, the foot plate because when you run the, the foot plate over your finger, it, it doesn't catch uh, doesn't catch your finger, and therefore it's not going to catch the conjunctiva. This is a single foot plate uh, device, and I'll, I'll orient the foot plate uh, towards me, um, uh, and I'll run it on the patient's conjunctival tissue, and then the diamond um, is on the cornea side, and it will be just inside clear cornea. And my technique, uh, my, my nomograms are actually very simple. I will look at a corneal topography map. I will look at the simulated keratometry readings. And um, whatever the sim Ks are in diopters, that's what I cut in clock hours. So as an example, say somebody has 1.7 diopters of corneal cylinder, axis 37 degrees. Then I would cut two paired, um, or a single pair of uh, peripheral relaxing incisions in that steep axis, 37 degrees, the incisions would be 1.7 clock hours in length to correct 1.7 diopters of astigmatism. So for one diopter, it would be paired one clock hour incisions. For two diopters, it would be paired two clock hour incisions. For two and a half diopters, it would be paired two and a half uh, clock hour incisions. And I can, I can picture clock hours in my head uh, better than I can picture 50 degrees or 55 degrees. And so typically, I will do these things without marking them, although I would say for anybody beginning this process, you want to mark the lengths of the incisions. And you want to mark the steep axis, of course, as well. And that's all done after you set the patient up and you establish your reference mark, exactly the way you would do any toric lens implant. So the, um, the, the PhD um, handle with the Trimen diamond, uh, for me, is like the sweet spot. Uh, I like a 0.7 uh, millimeter tip on the diamond and about, about 1.1 up at the shaft. I use the same diamond, actually, for all steps of a cataract operation. So I'll, I'll do my relaxing incisions to start the case. I'll do a paracentesis with that same blade fully extended, inject my anesthetic and epinephrine and viscoelastic in, and I'll come back and I'll freehand the phacoemulsification tunnel. And uh, it's a very versatile diamond. You can pretty much do anything with it. And again, I like that that foot plate design is really sweet because it just slides on the conjunctiva without binding or catching it. One of the things you want not to happen when you're using a diamond is you want, don't want to be moving it along the limits and all of a sudden it sort of catches. And then you're pushing, 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 but it's not going. All of a sudden it gives and, and all of a sudden you run through whatever's in front of the diamond. So you know you want something that's going to glide very, very nicely. And I, for my nomogram, I typically do a one-size-fits-all depth. Um, so for the typical cataract age patient who's in their 60s or above, I will typically use a 450 micron blade setting. Now, you're not going to get that full depth of 450. There is some compression of tissue at the leading edge of the blade. But 450 will get you more than halfway through the cornea, which is pretty much all you need to do. You don't need to go all the way down to the bottom or 80% of depth. You can get a decent 
effect um, at just a little over half of the cornea being a, a, in size because the, the strength of the cornea is in the anterior fibers. Now, in the old days when we did radial keratotomy, that was different. We had to actually get very deep. We would set the blade to 100% of thinnest uh, central pachymetry and cut really deep. But now with these relaxing incisions near the limbus, we don't need to do that. So it makes them very forgiving. It makes the globe you know, it retain some structural integrity. And the incisions are actually very comfortable for the patient after surgery.